There are a number of clinical trials of gene therapy already in place, both for haemophilia A and B. These are being conducted in adults and um, involve using adeno-associated viral vectors into which either the factor VIII or factor IX gene um, is inserted. And the results of these um, have been published, at least in preliminary form, in major journals already, and the results are extremely encouraging. We've seen with factor IX, for instance, levels of over 30% achieved uh, and expressed for up to a year. In the case of factor VIII, we've seen even more encouraging results with factor VIII levels actually within the normal range or above, um, expressed and maintained again for a year or more. The approaches for gene therapy for haemophilia A and B are exactly the same. The clinical trials involve uh, putting the factor VIII or factor IX gene into a viral vector, which is then injected into a peripheral vein. And then, hopefully, the virus uh, finds its way into the liver. It's important to emphasize that the virus is what's called gutted. That is, uh, there's no infectious material in there at all, and there's no risk of uh, triggering an infection. There are several clinical trials in progress at the moment, and uh, some of them in phase one and others in phase two. Uh, the details of the clinical trials can be found in the EHC's uh, Novel Technologies booklet, which was published in uh, May 2018. But to give a rough idea, we expect phase two clinical trials for most, if not uh, all, of these uh, clinical trials to be finished by about the end of 2021. Um, and uh, in the case of phase three studies, I think we'll expect those to be completed by the end of 2023. The results of clinical trials so far of gene therapy have been extremely encouraging. And the results of two major studies have been published in uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, which is a very prestigious and major journal. We've seen in the case of factor IX, for instance, that levels of around 30% or more can be achieved and maintained for over a year. In the case of factor VIII, even more remarkable results have been observed, and we've got results of 50% or more, even above the normal range, um, expressed and maintained for a year. The results of the clinical trials of gene therapy so far are extremely encouraging. It's important to emphasize they've only been conducted in adults so far, but I think it's reasonable to expect that we will see gene therapy licensed uh, within the next five years. A big question to be answered is what is the cost going to be? And of course we have no idea at the moment. Um, the initial hope was that gene therapy would be cheap, or at least be cheaper than conventional factor VIII, but I'm not sure that's going to be the case. If we look at the first licensed gene therapy, um, that was a product known as Glybera for the treatment of lipoprotein lipase, and when that was licensed by the EMA, the cost was about 1 million euros, which is clearly quite high. Um, I think we're going to have to develop new costs, modelling costs, uh, for uh, the payment of gene therapy. One option might be, for instance, a mortgage-type system where we pay not just an initial one-up, upfront cost, but pay uh, annually as long as the gene therapy remains effective. 